My name is Phil. I'm the uh, duty pilot today at Air Med One. Uh, this is Wendy Brown. She's our paramedic, and Mike Cottrell is the nurse. Okay. This is a uh, it's called an EC135 uh, P2 Plus. It's made by it was made by Eurocopter. Eurocopter has since been sold to Airbus. Uh, they make the big huge airliners. Uh, the aircraft is completely state of the art. Uh, there are quite honestly no more better equipped or more up to date aircraft than this one. We have all the latest safety equipment, terrain avoidance radar, traffic radar for other aircraft. We fly with night vision goggles. Uh, we have everything in this aircraft and we're doing everything with this aircraft that the FAA has mandated everyone do by the year 2016. Uh, quite honestly, and I'm, I don't say this to scare you or cast a bad light on this, but the safety record in this business has not been good. I don't know how closely you follow what's going on, but there's been way too many EMS accidents, way too many people hurt or killed in this thing. So what that has led to is the FAA uh, coming down pretty hard on all the operators in terms of what equipment we have to have and the training we have to have. Uh, the good news is the company I work for, Metro Aviation, who contracts the Superior, have been doing all this stuff for years. So we are way ahead of the curve as far as this training and equipment stuff goes, so we're, we're pretty happy about that. So all that being said, uh, our main concern is safety. Uh, yes, we transport the sick and the dying and the mangled and mutilated, but we don't compromise safety to do that. Uh, a good example of that is weather. Uh, we have very strict weather minimums we adhere to, uh, and we will not fly if we're below those minimums. But getting back to the safety record, that, that's one issue that has really downed a lot of aircraft, is people pushing it in bad weather. Uh, we don't do that. Uh, Superior has a gazillion ambulances, they can go pick up the patient if we can't in the helicopter. So safety first all the time. We fly at about 120 knots in cruise flight, that's about 130 miles an hour or so. So roughly we're going about two miles a minute uh, when we're up there in the air. I know it looks pretty small and compact, but it is more than enough to do what we have to do. And basically, uh, and again, they'll speak about the equipment. We, we have essentially a little flying emergency room here. Monitoring, uh, IV pumps, suction, oxygen, uh, the whole nine yards, all the medications we carry on board the aircraft. So my name is Wendy, I'm a flight paramedic. Um, I've been flying for almost three years now. Um, some of the things we do, just like in the back of the ambulance, we carry all the same medications with exception to a few extras because we're actually critical care. Our scope of practice is a little more expanded. What we don't do is extrication. So if we land at a car accident, you guys are EMTB students, so maybe you have a future in a fire department or whatever the case is. But the fire department is who extricates the patient and then we immediately assume patient care. It's a great job. You guys know because you're, you know, headed that way. Maybe you guys have a future as a paramedic too, but it's really fun. There's, it, it's a little scary at first, you know, flying in a helicopter and like Phil was talking about, the risks and all that are involved, but we really are safe. We have state-of-the-art equipment and we don't take any shortcuts for our safety or the patients. Um, it's a very advanced job that we do. Uh, most of our transports are from hospital to um, hospital, but we land at scenes, sometimes car accidents, fires, etc., etc. Um, we really like working for Superior. We really like working on helicopters. And we'd like to see some of you come on over.